What's up game developers of YouTube? Have you ever been working on a game, maybe it's a shooter, and you just didn't quite understand, or maybe you just don't know how to get certain things to work, certain things like bullets, or things rotating around your mouse. All these things are obviously very important in a game like a 2D shooter or any shooter, but it requires trigonometry and trigonomic functions and that's what this video is going to cover. Let's say you have a player for a top-down shooter. You want the player to be able to shoot projectiles such as bullets. You want the bullet to go to where your mouse is. There's only one problem, figuring out how to get it to follow that line from your player to your mouse. This is where trigonometry comes in, hence try in trigonometry. This will be involving triangles. So this is a function from my top-down shooter that I'm working on, and this function is what gets that line of between your player to your mouse. Unfortunately, this may not seem like the most appealing thing to look at. So I'm going to break it down using pictures, and I hope I can get a basic idea or an easy uh, way of looking at this. But before I start, I just want to get out that the convert chords function is used because sometimes the window can move, so the mouse position wouldn't be where it's at visually, so that's what convert chords do. And the B box is short for bounding box, so the only thing we're going to be looking at is the B box left and the B box top, which is basically the player's position, so that's why we're only looking at that. So here's the diagram that I decided to go with. The green dot will represent the player, and the red dot will represent the mouse. Now the way A10 works is that it has to be based from the left, the very left, which would be the line at 0, 0, going down to 0, 100. So what we got to do is get the mouse position based off the line. So the way we do this is we simply take the mouse position and subtract the player position. I use the SFML library, which has its own structure for a float. Don't worry, this structure isn't that big. All it is is simply a structure that holds a float X and a float Y. You can easily create this or just simply use two floats, uh, whatever you prefer. So as I said, all we do is take the mouse X subtract the player x. Take the mouse y and subtract the player y. And now our position is the position based off the grid. So now we're back to our original diagram. Only one thing. I decided to remove the player and the mouse dot. We won't be needing this anymore now, now that we created a point based off the grid. This point will now be labeled or color coded purple and this point would be the pause. I'm going to draw a line at the top, that way it's more easier to understand. Now you're about to find out what the ATAN2 function really does and what it returns. This is why I decided to draw a line at the top. ATAN2 returns the line from the upper left, 0, 0, to the point or the parameter that you gave it. This line is the line from point A to point B or, if you would prefer, from the player to the mouse. You notice that the line is going in a lower right or a bottom right direction. Let's look at the first picture that I showed to see if that is correct. As you can see from the first diagram that I showed at the very beginning, point A to point B, or from the player to the mouse, would go in a bottom right direction. So yes, the ATAN function did return the correct line, and if you use this, it should move the bullet in the correct path. As an added bonus, I'm going to show another example that does involve trigonometry. This example may not be often used, but still nonetheless it is a trig function that can be used, and I'm using it for my game. So let's say you want something to react in a circular path. For example, in my top-down game, I have a function that spawns a horde of zombies in a circular path. This may be used to surround the player, causing the player to act quickly and strategically. This involves a trigonomic function, and it is also based off the unit circle. 
This unit circle is used often, at least for me, because it easily displays the use of cosine and sine in a unit measurement. But please take note, in a programming language, the cosine, sine, and tangent functions may only take a radian. What this means is, if you were to try the output in a programming language, sine of 90 degrees, you may not get one. So please take note, because this has happened to me so many times, and it's kind of hard to figure out the problem if you don't fully understand what you're supposed to pass as the parameter. So now we're back to our first diagram. Notice how I decide to use the fading effect from the unit circle to this. This is basically to show that my example of zombie spawning is no more different from using the unit circle. So now that I got that out of the way, let's actually look at some of the code and let's actually implement this unit circle. This diagram can easily display the use of my circular zombie spawning in my game. The line from the center of the circle to the very tip of the circle will be the spawn point, hence the arrow saying spawn point. At the upper left you will see float degrees, cosine, and sine. The degrees will be the angle of the line. The cosine will be the return value of that degree, and the sine will also be the return value of the degree in cosine and sine. But please take note that in between the cosine to degrees is a function or code to convert from degrees to radians. Please remember to do that. So, as you can see, we start out at a degree at zero. So the cosine will be at 1 and the sign will be at 0. So the zombie will spawn to the right. After that we increase the degree by 45 which is why the degree is at 45. The cosine of 45 degrees is 0.5 and the sine of 45 degrees is 0.5. This means that the spawn point will be at an upper right. I decide to jump from 45 to 270 because you could probably already see a circular pattern. But I'm going to do this one that way you guys can make sure. At 270 degrees, you can see the line is going down. The cosine of 270 degrees would be 0, and the sine of 270 degrees would be negative 1. This will cause the spawn point to go down. A circle has only 360 degrees in it. So basically, I have a loop that loops the degree increase until it's greater than or equal to 360. After that, my zombie spawn should look a little something like this. But in order to get the zombies to be spread out, all you got to do is multiply the return value of the cosine or sine by whatever you want. For example, I could do something like cosine of 45 degree times... 100 and it will spread out in a radius of 100. It's really that simple. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and also be sure to follow me on Twitter. That way you know all the cool crazy stuff that I'm doing. And also take note that this was my really first drawn out tutorial. So if you still have questions, you can send me a comment or send me an email or send me a message on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching.